It has been quite some weeks since we solved an easy problem. This one really caught my attention because it involves some mathematics and that is always fun. So let us see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will go over the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. After that, we will start off with a brute force approach. Then we will look at a solution using binary search. And after that, we will use a mathematical sequence to arrive at an even faster approach. And it goes without saying, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can actually see how all of this is working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. The problem statement is actually very, very straightforward. You are given an integer and you have to determine if this is a perfect square. A perfect square is a number which is obtained by multiplying an integer with itself. So like 2 into 2 is 4. So 4 is a perfect square. 10 into 10 is 100. So 100 is a perfect square. You cannot multiply two decimal values to get a perfect square. For example, I have my first test case over here. It is 16. You know that you can get 16 by 4 into 4. So this is a perfect square. So for the first test case, you need to return true as your answer. For the second test case, I have the integer 14. You cannot multiply any two integers that are same to get the number 14. 3 into 3 is 9 and 4 into 4 is 16. So you will never get to 14. For this particular test case, you need to return false as your answer. You might be wondering, all of this is pretty simple. Why is this problem a little tricky? The catch over here is that you don't have to use any of the library functions. Every language has some. Java has math.sqrt. In Python, you can directly use sqrt. Similarly, in every other language but you don't have to do it. So how can you come up with an approach to it? Let us take up a number and then start to think about some solutions. I have 36. You know that 6 into 6 is 36. But how do you arrive there programmatically? One approach is that you use the brute force approach. That means you start from the first number and then keep on doing the squares of it. Then 3 into 3 will be 9. 4 into 4 will be 16 and then you go on. As soon as you get a 36, that means you found it and you can return a true. If this number was 37 instead, then what will you do? Just keep on going ahead. You get 7 into 7 and then you arrive at 49. 49 is greater than 37. It means you do not need to process any further and that is where you can stop. So in that test case, you can return false as your answer. This is the brute force approach and it works perfectly every time. But what is the problem? You would be taking up order of n time to arrive at a solution because you're checking every integer possible, correct? Certainly there can be better ways around it. When you start to attack a problem, you understood that in the brute force approach, you were going from one all the way up till n, correct? You need to speed up your process. That means you will need to divide up your things and you are going from 1 to n in a sorted order. So if you have a sorted array and you want to divide, the first thing that should come to your mind is a binary search because it works on the divide and conquer approach and you need a sorted array. But over here, where is the array? What you can do is you can take up a number line. In this number line, the low will be 1 and high will be 36, correct? You know that if this number is a perfect square, you will find the integer somewhere in between. And that is how you can arrive at the answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the binary search technique using these two pointers. Right now, I need to arrive at a middle point. As soon as I get a middle point, I will get it somewhere over here. I got a mid and now I check is 18 into 18 equal to 36. No, that means this value is very, very high. And what do we do in that case? We take up the high pointer and move it at mid. What happens now is you have a new low and high and you will again calculate the mid. This time mid will land over here and you are going to get 9. Once again, do the same thing. 9 into 9 is 81. It is still higher than 36. So what I will do is I will move my high pointer over here. Again, apply the binary search. Low is 1, high is 9. So mid will be somewhere around here. That is 5. So that is how you're going to approach it. Once you have found out 5, again, you will apply the binary search on this segment. 
ultimately you will arrive at a value that is 6 and 6 into 6 will be equal to 36. That is how you found out that okay 36 is a perfect square and you did not use any of the library functions. If in any case low becomes greater than high that is where you stop and you can see that yes this number was not a perfect square. So a binary search works perfectly for us and you are able to do it in order of log in time. If you want to take a look at the code for this approach, I have my number over here and it is passed in as an input parameter to the function is perfect square. So the first step that we do over here is we have some sanity checks that if the number is less than zero or it is zero or it is one, I can simply return some of the base cases. If it is zero, I return a false because negative numbers cannot be perfect squares. And if it is a zero or a one, I can simply return a true because they are already perfect squares. After this, I will start my binary search. The first thing that I do is I appoint a left pointer and a right pointer. Once you're done with this, the next part is pretty standard. You will run your binary search loop and this loop runs until left is less than equal to right. And in each iteration, what do you do? First of all, find the mid element. You got the mid as 18, correct? Now try to square it. So you do square equals to mid into mid. You will get 18 into 18. Now check if this number equals to my actual number. No, right? So it means I need to update my high pointer. That is exactly what I do. Square is not equal to num, so nothing will happen. Square is not less than the number, so nothing will happen. So I am left with this last condition. I am moving my right pointer to mid. So what will happen is right now points at mid. This loop will continue again. You will again find a mid value using the left and right. And then you will again find the square. This is how this loop will continue to go on. If you find the square equals to number, that means if you land at six somehow, six into six will be 36 and you can simply return a true. If none of these conditions matches and let us say the number was 37, nothing will happen, nothing will match. So this loop will end and at the very end, you can simply return a false. It means the number was not a perfect square. So what did we just do? We were able to apply the binary search technique. And how much time does it take? It simply takes an order of log in time. And what is the space complexity? You're not taking up any extra space. So the space complexity is order of one. That means a constant space. Now, all of this is very good. And probably a binary search technique is the most preferred one because that is what your interviewer wants to see. However, there is some interesting mathematical concept about this problem as well. And that is based upon perfect squares. For a moment, forget everything about code. All you know is that you have this number available. Just try to think how do your perfect squares look like. For example, for my first set of natural numbers, my perfect squares will be something like this. 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36 and 49. Now try to notice what is the difference between each of these squares. So what I'm trying to say you is do 1 minus 0. So what do you get? You get a 1. What about 4 minus 1? You get a 3. How about 9 and 4? You get a 5. How about 16 and 9? You get a 7. What does this look like? All of these are odd numbers, correct? And if this sequence is correct, this next number over here should be 9. And you can verify it. 25 minus 16 is 9. If you keep on going forward, next number is 11. And that is 36 minus 25. Similarly, the next number will be 13. This is a sequence that can keep on giving you perfect squares every time. So what I'm doing over here is I am taking up the first odd number. Then I'm adding the second odd number. Then I'm adding the third odd number. And it will go on like this. At each of the iteration, you will keep on getting perfect squares. So first I got one, then I got four, then I got nine, then I will get a 16, then I will get a 25, and then I will get a 36. I believe you are able to easily see the solution now. Just keep on adding all of these numbers. If you encounter this particular number somewhere, 
you know that you have found a perfect square and you can simply return a true. If however, your sum becomes greater than this number. For example, let us say the number was 37. What will you do? You will keep on going ahead and you will add a 13. As soon as you add a 13, the sum becomes 49. And what do you do? You will stop over here because 49 is greater than 37 and you can simply return a false. So what just happened? You did not need any extra space and you were able to take the advantage of mathematical sequences to arrive at an even efficient approach. This approach works in an order of square root of n time complexity because you will keep on iterating until you reach the square root value of the input number. Even for this approach, let us quickly take a look at the code. This is gonna be super fun and super super simple. I have this input number over here and it is passed in as an input parameter, correct? Now what do you do? In the first step, I take up what my starting odd number is and what is my starting sum. So odd number equals to 1 and sum is also 1. You will now run a while loop and you will keep on running this until your sum is less than this input number because that is how you know that okay I have to stop over here and what do you do if this sum equals to number you can simply return a true currently sum is 1 and this is 36 so don't do anything rather go ahead and what are we doing over here I need to look at the next odd number so what I do odd plus of 2 and that gives me a 3 and I will add this 3 to my existing sum so that is exactly what I do over here. On doing this, I will get sum equal to 1 plus 3 and that equals to 4. What will happen in the next iteration? This loop will run again and I will check. Is 4 equal to 36? No. So continue ahead. And what I'm going to do next? I will find out the next odd number. So 3 plus 2 and that is 5. How do I find out my perfect square? I will add this odd number to the sum. So 4 plus 5 and that is a 9. This is how this loop will continue on. If this sum becomes greater than the input number, this loop will break and you can simply return a false. If at any instance, this sum equals to 36, you can simply return a true. And that is the mathematical beauty. This solution does not require any extra space. So the space complexity is order of one. And this solution works in the time complexity of order of square root of n. I am pretty sure the maths behind the solution would have really amazed you. And if you see this question ever in an interview, you are expected to give a solution using the binary search technique. And if you want some cherry on top, that is when you can discuss about the mathematical sequence and try to work it out. Talk to your interviewer about the patterns you're seeing and then derive a solution. Do not just directly go towards the solution. It simply means that you have memorized it and you are not working towards it. So these are some things that you should always keep in your mind. I know that this problem has multiple solutions. Which one is your favorite? And can you think of a method that is other than the two solutions I just discussed? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This really keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also, a huge shout out to all of the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority to reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well. Stay tuned for my upcoming video. Until then, see ya.